If you're using the Xtool D1 or D1 Pro and you have a poorly lit workspace or you're using the Xtool enclosure and you're finding it dark in there, I have the solution for you in the form of this LED lighting kit. It's available on my website embracemaking.com and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to install it. First we'll have a look at what's included in the kit and the stars of the show here are these two aluminum diffused LED bars. To power the LEDs there is a wall adapter, now it is the North American style plug but it is rated up to 240 volts so if you're outside of North America you'll need some sort of adapter. You'll also get two wire extension harnesses, one without a switch and one with an inline switch. Both have male and female barrel connector jacks on the ends. You'll also get these adjustable mounting brackets for those LED bars and they're able to swivel. And we'll get to the adjustment a little bit later, but there's a total of four of them. And finally, you'll get a bag with all of the necessary mounting hardware. We'll start the assembly by taking two of the clips and two of the screws from our hardware bag, as well as two of the adjustable brackets. On the back of the brackets, you'll find a letters F for female, and another one with a letter M for male. And these correspond with the connectors on the ends of the LED bars. So you'll see here that I'm holding the bracket with the M on it, and that male barrel jack will slip through that bracket. Similarly, now I'm holding the bracket with the F for female, and the female barrel jack will slip through that bracket. You must put the barrel jack connectors through these brackets first before installing these small metal clips. So now we can take our metal clips and we can put them in the channel of the plastic brackets. You'll notice on these metal clips that the whole location is not perfectly centered and so you're going to orient them such that the side of the clip with more material on it will face the outside of the bracket. Then we can use the included screws to secure the clip in place. And again here I'll point out that this must be done with the barrel jack connector already put through this bracket. Make sure the clip is secured down nice and straight inside of that channel and not wobbling around. However, keep in mind this is a plastic bracket so you do not have to go too crazy with tightening that screw either. It should just be snug and secure. The back of the LED bar should now snap into place on the top of this clip and it should feel secure and it shouldn't wobble around. Then we can simply repeat this process on the other side. We're going to take the clip, secure it with a single screw, and then snap the two pieces together. If for some reason you have to remove the LED bar or you notice that it is wobbling a little bit on the clip, you can apply a medium amount of force to twist the LED bar off of the clip and now we can make some adjustments. To make the connection between the LED bar and the clip a little tighter, I'm taking a flathead screwdriver and I'm just ever so slightly bending those little arms outwards. If you end up bending them too far and you can't get the LED bar back on, you'll have to bend them inwards in the opposite direction. Repeat the process for the second LED bar and now we're going to make sure that our adjustable mounts are in the correct position. And you can see here on the 3D model that there's a series of teeth around the adjustable mount. There's one section of this ring that looks like it's missing two teeth and we're going to want those facing down towards the base of the bracket. Make sure all of your brackets are in this position before proceeding. Your brackets will come with some very strong mounting tape pre-applied. Yours will be red, mine looks a little different, and I used some weaker stuff for this video in case I had to reshoot some of these clips, so that's why it might look a little different. But either way, it's time to remove the liner from both of your brackets in preparation for mounting the LED bar. The bars will get mounted inside of the front and rear frames, and we'll start with the rear frame. So I've pushed the gantry to the front, so we have lots of room to work within, and I'm just going to position the LED bar in the center, the best that I can, and we'll simply stick it down. On the right hand side, this male barrel jack will not get used, so you can either bend it up into the frame and leave it like this. You don't want it sitting in this pocket right here, or you can point it down below the frame, and this is how I tend to leave mine. It's completely up to you, but it should look like this at this point. Now we can install the LED bar in the front, and you'll notice that the front frame has quite a bit more going on. So what I like to do is I like to tuck the Y-axis motor to the back of the frame and then I like to install the LED bar in front of it. It's a tight space to work within but the LED bar will fit underneath of the Y-axis rod. The barrel jack connectors will exit downwards towards the bottom of the machine 
and the assembly should look something like this. And now we're ready to adjust our LED bars, but what you do not want to do here is push them down and try and rotate. You want to gently lift them up and rotate. If you push them downwards, you'll find that you're actually further locking them into place and they will not rotate. I'll now demonstrate with the bar mounted in the front frame. And again, it's a tight area to work within, but you should be able to gently lift it up and rotate the LED bar downwards. I find that rotating it downwards one notch is sufficient and then you'll want to repeat the process for the rear bar. Next, we need to do some wire management. So we're gonna remove the laser module because we're gonna be flipping the entire machine upside down. We're going to install three of these included adhesive cable tie clips to the bottom of the frame and we're working on the side of the frame opposite of the main wiring harness. And so we're going to grab our wire extension without the inline switch and we can plug it into the LED bar at the back and the LED bar at the front. These barrel jacks are the style that push and then twist to lock. Now we can take our cable ties, put them through the cable tie clips and secure the extension wire in place. I like to bundle the excess at the back of the machine, and I also like to wrap the wires behind the machine legs. This keeps the wires away from any of the moving parts as well as the work area, so they'll never get pinched in the belts, the motion system, or interfere with the end stops. Then we can flip the machine back upright, and having a look at the area underneath the mainboard, you'll find the female barrel jack connector coming off the front LED bar. We can now connect this to the wire extension with the inline switch. So again, the barrel jacks push together and then twist to lock. Now we can connect this wire extension to the power supply. Now ultimately you're free to organize your wires any which way you choose. However, this is the way I recommend doing it and I personally prefer doing it because the wiring harness exits at the same side as the main power supply and therefore you could bundle those wires together or if you had the whole thing inside of the X-Tool enclosure, you'd have the same exit and entry for those wires. Now we're finally ready to flip that switch and power the LEDs on for the first time. Now I'm in my filming studio, so I have all of my studio lights on, but despite that, you can see that the LED lights still make an appreciable difference. But we can really see the difference here when I power down all of my studio lights and I just have my ceiling lights on. And depending on your situation, this might be a better representation of your garage, your workspace, or whatever dimly lit area you might be stuck working in. And you can see once you power the LEDs on, the workspace becomes so much more clear and well lit. And because the LED bars are mounted lower than the gantry and laser module, when I move these components around, you'll notice that there are no annoying shadows being cast on the workspace. And then when we power the lights back down, we can again see the stark contrast between the before and after conditions. And for good measure, we'll have a slightly different look at a different angle from the top of the machine looking downwards into the workspace. And we can see that these LEDs produce a nice natural looking light. It's not too white or blue, and it's not too yellow or amber either. It's a nice natural daylight color. And so that covers the installation. And I don't know about you guys, but as I'm starting to get a little bit older, I'm finding that I appreciate a well-lit workspace a whole lot more. The other great thing about this kit is that I designed it to fit within the bounds of the frame. So if you're using the X-Tool D1 enclosure, which I know is a really tight fit around the machine, this will still fit inside of that enclosure and really brighten things up in there. I hope this upgrade will make working with your D1 and D1 Pro a much more enjoyable experience and in this video, you guys may have noticed some other attachments, accessories, and upgrades, and you can find all of those on my website, embracemaking.com. I'll put a link in the video description down below. My catalog of parts for this machine is constantly growing, so I'd encourage you guys to check back often. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.